The Dow Jones Industrial Average on Wednesday crossed the psychologically important 20,000 level for the first time, with the S&P 500 and Nasdaq also trading in record territory. The gains on Wall Street following upbeat earnings releases from heavyweights such as Boeing and Caterpillar. So how long will the Dow hover in record territory and what could bring it down? Joining us to discuss is WSJ Heard on the Street editor, Ken Brown. Welcome, Ken. Great to see you thank here. Thank you. Thank you. So this has been happening. We've been waiting for this for a while, <laughs> right? This is. Oh, <laughs> man. We got our Dow 20,000 hats made, you know, two months ago. Exactly. So how much of what is happening today is just symbolic? It's all symbolic, right? It's just another number. It's no different than 19,000. 999, right. except that people care. I mean, there's all this evidence that these big numbers matter to investors. Maybe it's because they just pay attention more, but it does matter, and it does matter for the future, and it does matter for how they feel about the market. So there's a huge psychological factor it here. Is, at play. Now, this is a, you know, an extension of the Trump bump that we've seen right. since Election Day, but how much of it also has to do with the economy that he inherited from President Obama? Right. So the economy is doing very well. I mean, no matter what the rhetoric says, the economy is doing well. And what happened was when Trump got elected, it kind of accelerated the, the, the sentiment about that because people felt like Trump was really going to try to juice the economy, cut regulation, things like that. And so initially, all the banks uh, got a big jump. And so Goldman Sachs was the, was the stock that was pulling up the Dow until a few weeks ago, and then everything stopped. Right. And January actually was one of the quietest, flattest months in history. It's really amazing. Until yesterday. And then people started to say, wow, Trump is really going to juice this economy, cut regulation. He uh, let these pipelines go ahead. And, some, and then there's earnings, which have been good, as you mentioned. Yeah. And that pushed it over the edge. So, you know, Boeing, Caterpillar, some of these bellwether mm -hmm. stocks that have been rising. What's behind those stocks? What's behind that success there? Well, the economy is doing well, right. and so these are cyclical. Most of many of them that are doing well right now are cyclical stocks, mm -hmm. which do well when the economy's the economy's doing well. And so that was part of it. Part of it is just sentiment. Part of right. it is people feel like I mean, you know, people feel like things are getting better. Right. And you know, all the sentiment indicators that people follow are are very very good, and that's been pushing. So are it. people feeling like they're getting a bit more clarity because we know there was the Trump bump, but then there's a lot of mystery over some of his policies and what exactly is going to happen. Is Wall Street feeling like it's getting more? Clear? Clarity? You're getting a little more. I think, you know, probably what happened was people were excited after the election, and then they were like, oh man, this guy's going to be president. What's he going to do? The tweets were coming out. You know, right. you, there was a nervous period. Yeah. Now he's president, and he's meeting with CEOs, and he's cutting regulation, and that's all good, typically good for business. Right. And so I think that's gave, given people a little more confidence. But of course, investors are saying, you know, hey, don't focus on this number, focus on the long haul. Right. What is the picture ahead? What could bring the Dow down? Well, the most obvious thing is, you know, valuation. So the market is expensive. Um, the price of the market relative to the earnings that companies are making is at a pretty high level. By some historic measures, it's at one of the highest, around the high levels of history, right before the tech stock bubble or the, the, the Great Depression. Right. Um, so it's pretty high. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to go down. It can stay pretty high for a long time. But that's the thing. And so you get situations where if earnings don't come through, mm -hmm. people are saying that things are going to be really good out there. If they're not, then the right. market goes down. If the economy slows down, the market goes down. If people get nervous. So something else that's going on is people are very confident. Uh, people, there's all these gauges of nervousness, investor nervousness, and all of them at super low levels. Everyone's very confident. Now, Donald Trump is an unpredictable guy. If, and, and the world is an unpredictable place. If something throws that and makes people nervous again, the market could go down. Absolutely. Let's talk quickly about the S&P 500 mm -hmm. because, of course, that's trading higher as well. Yeah, eight, yeah. eight out of the main 11 sectors higher. Yeah. Technology higher. Mm -hmm. but the weak spots, though, yeah. telecoms and utilities, those are lagging. Right. So telecoms business stinks. Yeah. Um, Verizon had earnings yesterday. Uh, the stock fell the most in five years. Mm -hmm. It had its worst day in five years. So telecom has something of its own issues. Right. The other thing about telecom is it doesn't really do any better when the economy is doing well. It's kind of a... When you're worried about the economy, you buy telecom, right? right? Because then it's stable. Utilities are sort of bond-like uh, stocks. They act like bonds. Bond yields have been going up, which means bond prices go down, which means utilities are weak. Right. And so that's the thing. The other thing is utilities had a great run for most of last year, and they're kind of so. If you're excited about the economy. You don't buy utilities. Right. It's a few weak spots there, but uh, overall, the picture is looking bright at the moment. Right. It's how, the, it's how the market should behave when the economy is accelerating, typically out of, or out of a slow period, which it's not. It's right. actually been good. So that's, 
An anomaly now is usually you see the market acting like it did. But the enthusiasm is catching up with what the market has been doing. Yes, and it's accelerated the yeah. market even more. No, that's yeah. right. So, so usually you'd see a market behave like this after a slowdown, after a recession or after an economic slowdown. Now we're seeing the market accelerate, but we haven't had that. So it's, it's kind of interesting. All right, Ken Brown, thank you so much for that analysis. Thank you.